you, you you talked in your book about your your strained relationship with your dad. Um, it, it kind of hits home for for me and probably for a lot of other people. How were how were you guys able to to make everything better before he he passed away? Well, I I, I wrote several chapters in the book about it. It was kind of a weird thing. Uh, I I try to make it as brief as I can, but. <clears throat> My dad was going to uh, close up the summer cottage that we went to as, as a kid, and my mom couldn't go with him, and he was in, he's like 65 at the time, and I happened to be home, which was unusual, and I said, oh, gee, I'll go with you, dad, let's take a road trip. So we drove two hours, and during that, I because I'd already become an actor, and you do research about a character, you ask all these questions. And I thought, wow, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff about, you know, fictitious characters. I, I don't even know that much about my dad. You know, when you grow up with your dad, he's just your dad. You know, you don't think he was a young man. He was a boy. He was a, a you know, young adult. He dated other people. I mean, that was, that's kind of mind blowing because, you know, your parents are always, you know, if they're together like mine were, they're, they were a unit, you know, and they, you just don't imagine that they ever had a life. You know? So, I ended up asking my dad a lot of questions and things that, and my dad was, he, he had a lot of secrets because he had such a difficult childhood. In the course of questioning him, driving down these country roads to this place, my dad starts crying. My dad cried my life. And he was telling me about how his dad essentially had abandoned them. Now, why I would be a 25-year-old guy and not know that about my dad is, is sad that he didn't feel safe enough or didn't want to open that can of worms. But, you know, I think that era of men were like, don't tell anybody the bad stuff. It'll just make them feel bad. And, you know, it was all about, you know, I didn't even know my dad was sick when I went home and he died that night because nobody wanted to say, gosh, dad doesn't look that good. You know, everything was trying to, you know, make things better than they were. And, you know, and of course you can understand that these are depression era people. This is world war two, you know, kids who grew up with lots of kind of stuff. Bad news was everywhere. You didn't create more bad news by talking about feelings and all that stuff. So I, I understood it, but it was just amazing to me. And then, you know, then that opened it. My dad's crying. I feel terrible now. I didn't want my dad to be crying, but as a result, it ended up breaking through the barrier that had kept us separate. He couldn't tell me things because he thought they would make me feel bad. So I didn't know anything. And he felt, it felt to me like he was just being strict and, and unemotional for no reason. And so suddenly, oh, this made it all make sense to me. And what's really weird is I talk about in the book, we got down to the summer cottage where we had a creek that we used to play in. And before we left, I said, dad, will you come down to the creek with me? And I was just wanted to look at it really. But I got down there and I said, hey, dad, let's, uh, you know, I'd use the words that he always used. Let's take a dip. And he said, well, I don't have a bathing suit. And I said, neither do I, dad. Let's, let's go skinny dip. We're out in the middle of nowhere in, you know, east central Ohio. And, you know, not, not a soul for, you know, half a mile, you know. So anyway, I ended up, I can't believe I'm even saying this now. I went skinny dipping with my dad. And <laughs> after the, the figurative unveiling and stripping down of our the problems of our relationship, to then physically be stripped down and swimming in the swimming hole that we had grown up swimming in when I was a kid and he was a, you know, a young man was just kind of beautiful beyond, you know, and at the time I didn't even think about it. It was only when I was writing the book, I thought, Oh my God, that's like, that, that's like, you know, you couldn't write a better story than that almost that, you know, and, and it was, it, it just, it, what it did was open my heart. You know, I thought, Oh my God, my dad didn't, do this to be mean to me or strict with me. He was hurt. He was an eight year old boy. He's been carrying that around with him for the rest of his, you know, for the rest of our lives together. And it just gave me so much more, uh, uh compassion and, and sympathy for him, uh, that it, it was, you know, almost instant, you know, I mean, my dad didn't change. He was still, you know, he was still who he was, but I changed. And, and that's, what's important. You know, as, as Mark Twain says, you know, when I was 20, my dad was an idiot. You know, by the time I was 40, I just, where, where did all this knowledge come from? You know, like, because, you know, you're the one that you can't see the wisdom until you're of a certain age and you're like, you know, so anyway, that, that was. And, they, and then they were right. So yeah, yeah. Most of the time they were right. My dad was, yeah. you know, 
you you get I mean if you're an aware person you get smarter just by living <laughs> you know and of course you can't see that as a 20 year old you think you know the all the answers and that was the old days dad you know it doesn't work that way anymore you know <laughs>